big thank you to Simply Safe for sponsoring this video. Do you have a boring wall that you just don't know what to do with? Me too, or I did, until I designed this custom floating shelf display and completely changed the look of my wall and my entire space. First off, I am going with maple for my shelves. Last year I did a floating shelf wall in my bathroom and loved the look of blonde against a gray wall. So I ordered a bunch of maple and started milling it down. If you've been following me, then you'll know I have a hard time of doing things on a small scale. But keep in mind that while I'm doing enough to cover an 18 foot wall, you could do the same steps for a single shelf, a smaller wall design, or an even bigger one. When cutting miters across the full depth like this, you'll get the best results if you do them at a table saw instead of a miter. Then for joinery, you could go with biscuits, dowels, but I was working at the woodshed for the day and Jacob lent me his domino. All three will give you alignment help when it comes to assembly time. Now keep in mind, all of this is customizable. I chose four and a half inch depth and put a small bevel on the front lower edge for flare. Also, since I'm working on such a huge design, I numbered my shelves so that I could keep track of them once they were chopped up. Once everything was cut, I gave everything a good sanding. Only going down to 120 right now because there is still work to do on these. I piled up my parts on my armor bench, then stuck them one by one in my super jaws to start drilling holes in the back. I'm placing a hole about every 12 inches. I marked center and then would use an awl to punch a starter divot so that my drill wouldn't walk around in the next step. My end goal is to have a half inch hole, but it's easier if you use something smaller first then work up to that size. So that's what I did. It's important that these holes be as straight as possible. And this way when you go to slide on the shelf, it won't get into a bind. It would actually be best to do this step at a drill press, but mine didn't have enough room for the board on end and the long drill bit. So instead, I used a speed square to try and keep my bit as straight as possible. Oh, and you can also see a flag of tape on my half inch bit. That's so that I don't go too deep. What I want is four inches of dowel supporting the shelf. So I bought a pile of half inch dowels, then chopped them into pieces at the miter. And a tip, I think it's easier to hold onto a round object out away from the fence so I used a scrap. Then I also used a sharpie mark to make repeat cuts go quick and easy. It washes right off after you're done. And I used these dowels to mark off the depth my drill bit needed to go into the shelf. These dowels are what will go into the holes in the back of the shelves. And if you buy half inch dowels and drill a half inch hole, it's going to be really snug fit. So you can sand them down. However, with the amount I'm doing, it seemed like a lot of work. So instead, I cut a kerf into them at the bandsaw. I'm using a scrap board to help feed it in most of the way, then using the scrap to safely pull it back towards me. This is enough to allow the dowel to slip into the hole, but still be a good fit. To make feeding them even easier, I took each one to my Triton belt sander and beveled each one just slightly. I used the plastic at the back as a steadying guide for this. Now the next step might seem a little bit out of place, but stay with me folks. Next, I finished the shelves. I'll be cutting off a portion, so I wanted to apply finish while everything was still whole. I set up a table with cardboard paper and used my Wagner Flexio 3500 to spray on a clear coat. The sprayer is great for latex paints, but also comes with a detailed nozzle for fine finishing. It's not just faster than a brush, but lays down a perfect glossy smooth finish. Once I let everything dry, I started cutting it up. The idea is to cut off the back portion of the shelf and turn that into the ledger board that will get mounted to the wall. The dowels will support the shelf, then you just have to slip the shelf on. The beautiful part about this is you don't have to have the holes perfectly centered or measured out because if you drill the holes as one unit, they will always be perfectly aligned. Real quick, I want to thank this video sponsor, which is Simply Safe. You guys know that I've used Simply Safe for my personal and commercial shop security for a while now. They provide serious home security with all the protection, but with none of the hassle, headaches, or expense of the old school brands. They've got sensors to cover every window, room, and door, plus lots of great extras like smart locks, video doorbells, water sensors, and more. Their new wireless outdoor security camera has a built-in spotlight with color night vision and two-way audio allowing you to speak directly to somebody on your property, which I really like. 
Simply Safe is trusted by over 3 million Americans, and it's no wonder as I found all of the devices to be very reliable, set up as a breeze, and they're easy to use. I've got the security system installed, window sensors, and HD cameras inside and out. The 24-7 monitoring service calls the authorities immediately in an emergency, making me feel extra safe. Save 20% on your Simply Safe security system and your first month is free when you sign up for interactive monitoring. You can visit simplysafe.com slash April to learn more. Now, let me show you the space I'm working with. This wall is 18 feet by eight feet, but I'll only be covering up what is above the couch and dog kennel, which is about five feet. Now, before covering it up with shelves, I painted the wall first so that I could have that maple pop against gray. I started by using a brush to do all of the cutting in the corners or on the outlets, then cutting in the ceiling and floorboard. No, I am not laying any plastic down. I'm actually a very clean painter. Then to fill in the wall, I tried out Wagner's paint stick easy roller. It's kind of like a giant syringe. You attach a small tube and dip it into the paint. There's a valve on the easy roller that you connect to this, then you pull the plunger and it sucks paint into the cylinder. <gasps> cool. It's working nice and clean. Okay, let's go paint. When you pull the trigger, the plunger forces paint onto the roller. And that means that you don't have to stop painting and reload the roller every few seconds. Crazy. And I will tell you that I've never painted a wall this fast. Wagner says it's twice as fast as a standard roller, but I think it's at least three times and definitely less messy. Then check out this really awesome product for washing out paint brushes. There's ridges all along the bottom to move the bristles of your brush around while water is running over it. And if you align the drain plug to your sink drain, then your sink will stay clean during this messy process. Now before I start hanging my crazy conglomerate of shelving units, let me hang a simple single straight shelf, say that five times, first to show you how easy the process could be if you don't go overboard with the design like me. I measured where on the wall I want the shelf. I use a stud finder to locate the studs, then transfer their location to the ledger board. Using a level, I can screw the ledger board to the wall, then just slip on the shelf. It's a tight fit, so I throw all my ISO tunes, then use a rubber mallet to seat it all the way. Woo! That's pretty! Easy peasy. Now let's introduce miters, super long runs, and a non-straight wall. I should have known, actually, that this was not going to be as easy as it seemed in my head. I repeated the same process for the long runs, and where the complication comes in is the dominoes requires the shelves to be moved in this way to connect, but then the dowels require the shelf to be put on this way to connect. And you can't do it in sections, or you can't do both movements at the same time. So what I ended up doing on the first few is I would just slightly put on the shelf so that I could slip the dominoes together, then slip the entire assembly on the dowels. Oh, please work. Yay, it's closing! It's working! Wow, that feels really great. And I'll tell you right now, this is not the method I stuck with. Because at the end of day one, Cindy and I were able to install two rows. And while it looked awesome from back here, some of the miters up close were really bumming me out. So the next day, I switched up the game plan by first gluing together an entire run. And this way, the miters would be super tight and closed. With my long spans, this does require a third set of hands, so I asked Jacob to join us for the morning. He brought with him some very handy clamping jigs for the miters. He made these on the CNC, and each line represents 10 degrees, so that they can help close a wide array of angles. You can line up a pipe clamp so that it's running center through the miter. Then, use two other clamps to attach the jigs to the shelves. The angle of the joint will determine how far back the jigs need to sit. But once you squeeze down on the pipe clamp, it applies pressure to the angle, keeping that miter closed so that we could throw in a few nails while the glue had time to set up. It's pretty clever, huh? I'm actually selling these on my website if you're interested in picking up a few. Not too shabby. No, oh, that's awesome. Okay, then the approach from there changed to Cindy and Jacob holding up the shelf assembly while I placed a level on it and traced it making sure to get the corners of the miters so that I could secure the ledgers of the shelf to the wall first in pieces, making sure it lined up perfectly to the pencil trace. Then we had a slip on the shelf as one big unit. For this, we glued the shelves in two sections, getting the right section traced, installing the ledgers, then holding up the left section of shelf to trace to then install the ledgers there as well. Then the big test, <laughs> slipping on the shelf that has a 15 foot span. 
An issue I'd never considered when designing this project was the straightness of the wall. If the wall is swimming a little bit, then there will be a gap. So I could pull the ledger and the shelf flush up against the wall, but then that will leave the gap at the miter in the front. By gluing the miters together and not allowing them to move, now the gap is forced to open in the back of the shelf. When it comes down to choice, I personally would like the gap in the back instead of the face. Oh, that one's beautiful. That one looks a lot better. Yay! It feels really good. Mm -hmm. Like that feels really great. Honestly, if I were doing it again, I wouldn't go with solid wood because now I understand there is no way to make it look perfect unless your wall is dead straight. So I would go with a torsion box design and use quarter inch MDF as a top and face. Then I would lay down maple veneer. This way the framing can bend to the wall and open up gaps where it's required, but then the veneer would make it look flawless. My cat's gonna love this. So just something to consider, but either way guys, I can't tell you how much I am in love with the results of this project. Like I said in the beginning, it not only changed the wall, but also my entire space. And that's it for this one. Check out my website if you're interested in picking up some of those really savvy clamping jigs. And I'll see you on whatever I'm tackling next, guys. Big thank you to Simply Safe for sponsoring this video.